Hello and welcome to Buddhist Door Global's weekly news review. I'm Dr. Justin Whitaker, senior correspondent for BDG. In this week's news, in China, President Xi Jinping has called for the sinicization of Tibetan Buddhism. During an address to senior Communist Party leaders at a two-day forum in Beijing on future governance of Tibet, she asserted that Tibetan Buddhism needed to adapt to socialism and to Chinese conditions. She told the 7th Central Symposium on Tibet Work on the topic of sinicization that political and ideological education should be increased in Tibetan schools. Despite decades of rule under the Communist Party of China, Tibet, officially known as the Tibet Autonomous Region, remains a deeply Buddhist society in which His Holiness the Dalai Lama continues to be widely revered as a spiritual touchstone, despite his self-exile in India since 1959. While Beijing views the Dalai Lama as a separatist or splitist who wants independence for Tibet, the 1989 Nobel Peace Prize laureate has repeatedly stated that he only seeks greater rights for Tibetans in their homeland, including religious freedom and autonomy. Also in the region, India and China are engaged in a tug of war over Soa Rigpa, a form of traditional Buddhist medicine. Last year, India applied for the conservation of Soa Rigpa at the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, asserting that the ancient system is part of the nation's intangible cultural heritage. This claim was quickly refuted by the Chinese government, which argued that Soa Rigpa originated in Tibet. At the core of this conflict is the decades-long territorial dispute over the Indian Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and neighboring Ladakh, where Soa Rigpa is widely practiced. While Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh are administered by India as Union territories, both India and China maintain a military presence in the region. Both countries have reportedly been utilizing the traditional medicinal system in their fight against COVID-19. In Russia, Talo Tulko Rinpoche has consecrated the lamp house of the Sanid Chora Monastery on the Kalmyk Steppe. Talo Tulko Rinpoche, the head lama of the Kalmyk people and Buddhist monks from the central monastery of Kalmykia, the golden abode of Shakyamuni Buddha, conducted a ritual of consecration for the lamp house in memory of Kalmykia's ancestors. The ceremony was held on August 29th at the foot of the Boshman Mound in Kechenarovsky district in the northwest of the Russian Republic. The site is historical for Kalmyks because the famous Sanij Chora Monastery, which served as a center for higher Buddhist education, was located there from 1907 to 1922. That monastery was built with the help of a representative from the 13th Dalai Lama, Tubten Gyatso. So it was of great symbolic importance that Talo Tulko Rinpoche, the honorary representative of the 14th Dalai Lama, Tetsun Gyatso, to Russia, Mongolia, and members of the Commonwealth of Independent States led the consecration. In South Korea, the country's oldest statue of a Buddhist monk is poised to gain national treasure status. The statue depicting the Buddhist master Hui Rang Daesa, who lived from 889 to 966, will be designated a national treasure by the country's Cultural Heritage Administration, or CHA. The advance notice came last Wednesday from the CHA with final designation expected after 30 days. The 82 centimeter tall statue of Hui Rang is made for, of dry lacquered wood and has been dated to the early 10th century. Master Hui Rang Daesa was the abbot of Haiensai temple built in 802 and located in the mountainous central heart of the peninsula. He was also the teacher and mentor of King Taigo Wang Jiang, the founder of the Goryu dynasty. Once designated as a national treasure, the statue will join just 372 other entities honored by such status. And lastly, the Contemplative Consciousness Network hosted a six-day retreat on parallel practices in Tibetan Buddhism and Christianity. 
The Contemplative Consciousness Network, or CCM, last month hosted a six-day virtual retreat titled Dwelling in the Heart of Reality, Parallel Practices in Dzogchen and Christianity, to explore the deep commonalities in practice and theory of the two ancient contemplative traditions of Tibetan Buddhism and Christianity. Running from 18 to 23 August, the retreat featured a series of dialogues conducted by Dr. B. Allen Wallace, a Buddhist scholar and Lama, and Dr. Eva Natanya, a scholar of Indian and Tibetan Buddhism. Each day of the retreat consisted of three sessions. Every morning, Wallace introduced a guided meditation and explained the Tibetan Buddhist Dzogchen tradition. This was followed by a comparative discussion with Natanya and meditation in the Christian tradition, followed lastly with a Q&A with both teachers. The CCN is an international network and charity that is dedicated to developing and practicing contemplative sciences. That is all for this week's BDG News Review. If you enjoy regular news videos delivered to you each week, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and share this video with friends. We appreciate your support and feedback in the comments below. Be sure to check out our website, BuddhistDoor.net, for these stories along with features and special coverage of Buddhism around the world.